Hello, this is the Sankofa Pan African series. Brefu, also sometimes referred to as the Queen of St. John, is the legend that we're celebrating in this episode. Please, let's take a moment uh, for you to subscribe to this channel if you've not already done so. Thank you. Brefu is a woman whose legacy has had very little acknowledgement. She was a slave who led a major rebellion against enslavement in St. John Island. St. John Island is one of the Virgin Islands in the Caribbean Sea. It is now a constituent uh, district of the United States Virgin Islands. Now, when Spain first occupied the Caribbean, they tried to use the indigenous people who they found on the islands for slave labor, but most of them died due to infection, infectious diseases brought to, to their land by the Spanish and from being overworked. Some were killed outright for refusing to be enslaved. By the late 17th century, the British, French, and Dutch competed for the island um, of St. John, and um, it ended up being claimed by the Danes. By 1718, Dutch planters had also installed themselves on the island. These planters needed people to work on their plantations, but could not persuade young people from their countries in Europe to come and work on the islands since the natives had um, been virtually um, extinguished. Attempts to export Danish uh, prisoners to work on the island, the way the British did in Australia and New Zealand, also failed. So they turned to Africa for the supply of slaves to work on the island. By the beginning of the 18th century, the Danish West India and Guinea Company had established their slave operation in the vicinity of, um, the, uh, of Accra in the Gold Coast um, area of present-day Ghana. Brefu, who we are celebrating today, was from the Akwamu ethnic group who were part of the Akan states. The Akwamu were decimated by slave trade and a large number of them ended up in St. John Island. Brefu was enslaved at a plantation in the Coral Bay part of St. John. In 1733, most of the islands uh, in the Caribbean experienced really bad weather like hurricane, drought and crop infestation leading to extremely severe living conditions on the islands. In order to protect themselves from the harsh conditions caused by these natural disasters, many slaves in the islands, including St. John, left their plantations to hide in the woods or forests. In other words, to maroon. In October 1733, some slaves from an estate on the eastern part of St. John and uh, from the company estate and other plantations around the Coral Bay area decided to escape. Now, in order to stop the enslaved people from escaping and forming independent maroon communities, the Europeans passed the Slave Code of 1733. If you want to know more about maroon communities, you should watch the episode I did on Nani of Jamaica. Now, the penalties for disobedience in the Slave Code of 1733 included severe public punishment such as a whipping, amputation of limbs, or death by hanging. Like Brefu, most of the Akwamu people who were captured and sold into slavery were nobles, wealthy merchants, or other powerful members of their society before they were captured. As such, 
they ended up leading the revolt on St. John Island in 1733. The leaders of the insurrection, including Brefu, started meeting regularly at night to develop a plan. They came up with a, a strategy to start a revolt, take control of the island, and rule it. So on the 23rd of November, 1733, the insur insurrection started with open acts of rebellion by slaves working in the Coral Bay Plantation. An hour later, other slaves joined the insurrection, pretending to be coming to the fort at the Coral Bay to make regular deliveries. The slaves who joined the ones at the Coral Bay Plantation had hidden knives which they used to kill most of the soldiers at the fort. After conquering the soldiers, a group of rebels stayed at the fort to maintain control. Another group took control of the estates in the Coral Bay area after hearing pre-arranged signal shots from the fort's cannon. On hearing the signal of the cannon, Brefu entered the main house on the estate on which uh, she had been enslaved and killed both her master and his wife. Taking all the gunpowder and ammunition and accompanied by a fellow slave, Brefu then proceeded to annihilate other slave-owning families that were neighbors of her masters. The slaves killed many of their enslavers on several plantations before moving along to the north uh, shore of the island. They did not destroy any property as they advanced because they intended to take over the estates and resume crop pro uh, production for their own benefit. While they fought, a white soldier managed to escape and alert the Danish officials. However, the alert was too late as the slaves managed to take over the fort and fire the cannon uh, from the fort indicating that they had taken over. A few slave owners managed to escape from the island in their boats and the Akwamu people took control of most of the island. Under the leadership of Brefu, the plan of taking over the plantation was successful until the early part of 1734, when the French collaborated with the Danes to take back the island. Rather than surrender and become re-enslaved, in April 1734, Brefu and 23 other brave Akwamu rebels committed suicide. After overcoming the rebellion, the French military and many slave owners were shocked to discover that it was Brefu, a woman who had almost single-handedly led such an extended uprising that almost succeeded in taking over the island of St. John permanently. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you've not yet done so. Please help share our videos and, and, uh, and like them. See you next time.